Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Adventure World. My name is Kelly. I'm Trevor. We're here at Overland Expo Mountain West 2022 in Loveland, Colorado to bring you our top two, top two favorite things we have seen at Overland Expo and you will not believe what you're gonna see next. Stay tuned. Hey guys, we're here at Uptop Overland with Micah, who Micah is the actual owner and chief engineer of this awesomeness right behind me. Micah, what is this thing? So this guy here, this is the ute, right? So this is a full bed replacement with a tray and canopy option that we're working on. We'll have these available in three different sizes. This is kind of the next level way to adventure where everything's in the right spot. It's just fully dedicated and designed for, for off-road camping and overland. And you know what? You nailed it. It is next level. You know, everyone's seen the Utes in Australia. They're very, very popular. They're starting to come here to the U.S., but this is different in many ways. So the main difference that I saw is the construction material, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, what are you using right. for this? So we always prototype out of aluminum because that's what we build our roof racks and bed racks out of. But our actual production units of these are going to be stainless steel. Any guy that fabricate understand the difference in... Uh, why you would use stainless over something like this and it's a first product for us to really get into something other than aluminum and really crack down with something that's built just incredibly rigid like this yeah to put you know 50 100 thousand miles on something like this loaded with all the gear and i'm excited to to get into this so so trevor and i literally walked around this for what two hours yesterday with micah <laughs> so. and micah pointed out every little p point of this thing and this thing is gorgeous i mean the fit and finish on this thing is amazing he's even talking about how his welds aren't great and i'm like well that's a million times better than what i'm doing so micah this thing is beautiful now the one thing that i saw that really stood out over every other canopy on the market is the way you're able to have the flat bed there's no ridge to it right explain that to us so when you open and shut this door the seal for the bottom of it is actually on the bottom of the door and it's got a wiper that'll go across here one of the things that we were looking at when we were doing the design was th these trucks are all lifted this is much higher than your tailgate used to be to begin with and you're right. picking up coolers or refrigerators and storage boxes and things like that and to have a lip in the way when you go to drag something out of the way it just makes everything that you put them here have to sit up a little bit higher right so to do it in this configuration where it has a nice flat level floor yeah i th i think this is the right way to do this i really think Absolutely. That this is a better way to do this yeah so honestly most canopies you have to take the canopy off and use the flatbed right so this is i think you could probably move a couch you can move things actually with this because of the flat bed, you can slide things in. You're not worried about destroying gaskets, sure. like you said. Super, super functional. I think so. Yeah. Um, I don't know that you're going to get a couch in it with the canopy on it, but... Maybe a know, small couch. Maybe a small, yeah. tiny you know, couch. A big trunk, tiny you know, couch. dresser. You know, just right. stuff. You know, stuff that you would normally have to remove it. I, I you can still utilize. I give up everything that makes it a pickup truck exactly. by having this on it. So. Perfect. And God, it just looks cool. Like I see this, you saw from a distance, you're like, wow. That thing, it just looks badass. It looks mean. It looks rugged. Now... What do you think these are going to retail, retail for when you get to market? So we did a lot of homework on what was out there and how long you had to wait for it. And I think that we have to compete with both of those things and find mm -hmm. a happy medium. Um, it's a little early in the game to talk money, money, but right. uh, we'll be right on par with everybody else. We're just going to be way faster. Faster yeah. and not have to import them from Australia, which is perfect. No, 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 no crazy freight, no customs. It's coming straight out of Colorado. Awesome. And Micah, where can people find you guys at? Uh, UptopOverland.com. Awesome. You guys have got to check this out. I'm sure it'll be on the website soon. If not, come to Expo, see this thing in real life, touch it, drool on it. It's amazing. <laughs> Michael, you did a great job. Thanks, man. I really Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Mateo here from Tacoma Beast. I saw a post on the Up Top Ute earlier today, yesterday actually, and I just had to come out here and check it out. This thing is incredible. Uh, it's, I think, the first prototype, and it already makes the truck look amazing i cannot wait until these go into production and we start to see them go out and a bunch of the vehicles out there it's going to be awesome badass thanks bro thank you man. Thanks, man hey guys i'm here at the enos grenadier booth with greg and greg behind me is the brand new enos grenadier the only one in the u.s correct correct and this is a prototype yeah, prototype. We All built right. it September 2021, pretty much hand-built, the only one in the States. Let me just tell you this, this thing is beautiful. Like, I love this truck. You have done an amazing job producing, bringing back that Defender feel. I love this thing. So tell me some of the things 
they really set this apart in the market for vehicles today. Absolutely. A lot of folks actually ask me, like, isn't it a pretty crowded marketplace? Not so much. If you consider Jeep, Ford, Toyota, Land Rover to an extent, and then Mercedes G-Wagon right up at the top. So if you look mechanically, this is pretty similar to the last generation G-Wagon. It's intentionally designed to be off-road first, so capability first, but it provides a great alternative to those people that maybe don't want another Bronco, another Wrangler, another Forerunner. Right, so I have watched all of the developmental videos that you guys have been putting out as far as powertrain, all the interior. So I'm very familiar with it, but yep. just give them like a little run around about what the drivetrain looks like, the inside. I sure. Go over the buttons. I love the aviation style buttons. They're amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, intentionally, this is very much off-road focused. It's body on frame. The frame is, is huge. Beam axles, three locking differentials. It's designed to be off-road capable first and foremost. We've chosen the powertrain. In fact, our powertrain partner is BMW. So a straight, straight six, gas, turbocharged BMW motor. Wow. Packages really well in the Grenadier, but it also really helps us with fuel economy, with refinement, and of course, to stay ahead of emissions. Excellent. And this thing really, like, you look at it from a distance and you would think it's a 110. Is that intentional, the, d the design of it, to you bring know, it back, the old Land Cruiser? We hear Land more people saying previous generation G-Wagon than we do old Defender. Okay. But yeah, absolutely. You know, hey, we've run an inspiration series that say if the inspiration's for Sir Jim, our owner and founder, who actually was the, the, the architect of the Grenadier, that certainly Land Rover, Defender, Toyota Land Cruiser, Willie's Jeep even, we've heard from yeah. folks that have come to the, uh, to the events, and of course the previous generation G-Wagon. But when you get inside, that's really the difference. You know, actually it blends the modern, the 21st century with kind of the analog nostalgia that people are really missing. Yes. Everybody's gravitating away to EV, minimalism, just what we actually wanted as a functional vehicle first and foremost. Yes. Aviation inspired, yes. When you can look inside the interior, you see all the switch gear. We didn't want functions buried three levels deep in an infotainment system that you've got to use touchscreens for. We actually wanted a vehicle that was functional, that you could use with gloves on, just use switches. They're reliable, they're functional. Why fix what isn't broken? Exactly, and you feel like you're in like an old World War II bomber when you're in that thing. <laughs> just looking at it, I'm just like, I just want to touch them all. I don't know what they do, but I want to flick them all. Yeah. It's beautiful. All right, so let's talk about the off-road capability of this vehicle. So obviously, solid front axle, front rear, coil over all around. Yeah, coil springs, I mean, intentionally, maximum articulation, maximum off-road capability, but also maximum serviceability. Okay. You know, serviceability is huge, so there'll be no air suspension on this. We wanted it to be as reliable and as robust as possible when, when being used off-road. And when it does break, because we all break stuff now and again, it should be as easy as possible to fix it, okay. rather than leaving you stranded out there on the trail. Excellent. And lockers, or is there an option for lockers or is that mandatory or standard in all of them? We didn't put it as standard. I chose not to do that front and rear. I mean, okay. really, it just there are, there are customers that will never use yes, the front actually, and rear lockers. Yes. It adds weight and it adds to the total cost of ownership, servicing, that kind of stuff. Okay. But it's going to be a really affordable option. Okay. Excellent. And is there anything else that really stands out on the Grenadier in your mind? Like, what is your most favorite part of this build? Oh, I couldn't pick a favorite. <laughs> you know, I have to say that we've spent a lot of time, not just on off-road capability, but on on-road manners, particularly here in the US. The US customer, on average, drives 60% more miles per year than anybody else in the world. Right. So actually, Moab or some of the parts in Colorado, they're not gonna be in your backyard. You're gonna have to drive three or yes. four hours to get there. It should be comfortable, it should be quiet, it should be refined. It actually should leave you energized to go off-road and when you get there. So I'm pretty proud of the balance the engineering team has struck between that raw off-road capability and on-road manners. Excellent. And now let's talk aftermarket support. Yeah. Lifts, you know, winch support, like things like of those sure. types for you know, your off-roader. Yeah. Do you guys have someone that you're working with directly to get that out to the market, or are you guys gonna have your own accessory line of lifts? Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna have our range of accessories. So fundamental accessories, roof carrying, winches, things that help you enhance the capability. But we're also working with the aftermarket. One of the things that we've done is pre-wired the vehicle, front, rear, and up to the roof line. That's perfect. I mean, really just to avoid you having to then tear the vehicle apart to get power or wiring up. Right. Just like to make it as plug and play as possible. Which is great because everyone likes to modify their vehicles and the, if you give them a good head start, it just makes it that much more acceptable to get in, get some really cool accessories on this thing, make it stand out, yeah. make it your own and take it to the trails. Uh, and we want the aftermarket to embrace this. You know, all the stuff that I've seen here today, it's some insane stuff here. 
folks that are just really creative, imaginative with some fantastic engineering. Yeah. You know, if we can embrace that and we can empower these guys to do that kind of stuff for the Grenadier in the same way as they're doing it for Ford, for Jeep, for Toyota, then I think we've been successful. Oh, this thing's gorgeous. I honestly cannot wait to see these on the trail and see what they do. I hope you guys sell a thousand of them. Thank you so much for your Thank time. Thank you, Kelly. I really appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, guys. So that was our top two here yeah. at Expo. And oh my God, the, <laughs> the Grenadier is gorgeous. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, Take my money. Yeah, please. Just take my money. You know, want a finger? This one. Yes. I don't care. It's amazing. Yeah. You have got to see that in person. Yeah. Everything you've seen on Instagram, on YouTube, in all the publications, do not yeah. do this truck justice. No. It is just beautiful. It, there is not one thing I can look at and say, oh, I don't really care for that. Yeah, this could have been done better. It, nope. it, no. No, yeah. it is perfect. They knock it out of the park and that's a prototype That's a truck. prototype. That's not even a production vehicle. Yeah. So it's only gonna get better and I don't even know how. Yeah, they're still refining it. I've actually talked to one of the guys there that didn't have a lot of skin in the game and he's like, yeah, there's some problems with it, but you know, like it's a prototype. So what do you expect? Yeah. yeah. It really does combine all of like your favorite classic vehicles. I mean, it's got Land Rover Defender, uh, 70 Series Land Cruiser, Mercedes G-Wagon, all jammed into one vehicle, but done better. In the words of Will Smith, it's the best of the best of the best. And also Will Smith, oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I, I would absolutely be honored to uh, be able to drive that thing for at least a day. Yeah, it, it, it'd be totally worth it. Yeah, we're already trying to get a uh, media vehicle. Yeah, we'll fingers see. crossed, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about the Uptop Overland Ute. Yes. Now let me tell you how much I want that on my Tacoma. I want to buy a truck to have that on yeah it. and not not a tacoma a truck yeah absolutely <laughs> that thing is amazing they have knocked it out of the park yeah. first go around the actual production model is going to be even better yeah i'm so stoked for that thing yeah it's it's gorgeous yeah it really is i mean having a modular design being able to flat pack it yeah like like that's gonna be awesome. Yep, Dem made domestically here in Colorado, USA, and being able to ship anywhere in the world. Uh, you know, yeah. you, I don't know if you've ever tried to import something like that, but even from Australia, it's not easy. No. Ask this guy. And it's very expensive. Very, very expensive. Yeah. All right, guys, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, follow us on IG, and I will see you guys next time. Peace. Ooh, I want cake. Follow you. I'll, I'll, follow I'll follow you, you. too. I'll follow you I'll on follow Instagram. I'll follow you anywhere. I'm creepy like that. <laughs> yeah! <laughs>